Gather together all who are as good as the dead. Yeah. Gather together all who are beyond hope. Gather together all who have made mistakes. Gather together all who seek God's promises. We have been gathered together by God. We have been blessed by the Holy One. Please repeat our opening prayer together. God of Abraham and Sarah, you offer the hope and promise of the blessing. A child of their own weight in life. A child of their own when nothing on earth pointed to an abundant future. You transform lives and shower grace upon all generations. God of Abraham and Sarah, through your service, you show us what faith looks like. Help us give up our dependence on worldly logic that we may rest fully Join with me in singing, Him Take Up Thy Cross. Can we do 117 first? 117. Those got turned around. The first two songs got turned around. 117. 117. Thank you. Thank you. 117.
Well, somebody came to church today that hasn't been here in quite a while. No kidding. And there aren't any children here, so we'll have to all be children. Too. Oh, yeah. And don't you suppose we could do that? Yeah, yes. that's... <laughs> yeah. Because we promised that Billy would come, and yeah. it's a terribly, terribly cold day. So Billy was almost afraid to come. Wow. But there's something he wanted to share, so I guess that's what he'll be. Yeah, please. Well, I'm so sorry that Billy is so sad. He really is sad today. There are any children here, so just everybody be a little child and make him feel a little better. He was sad that Dorothy couldn't be here, but now I think he knows the reason. He was also sad that Darby was in the hospital, and he was sad about Olin Wan's cousin. Billy takes things to heart. And then he was sad for all of us, because we've been sad. And when adults and children are sad, it, it makes Billy very sad. And so we were trying to think, what could we do to help Billy? And then Billy thought of it himself. And that is a miracle that only God can provide. Because how many of us can turn around immediately and change from sad to happy? <laughs> well, the happy thing is that Dorothy is with her grandbaby, and she gets to be a grandmother all by herself. Because that's so good, isn't it? Some of you know. And so if you don't, but your turn will come. Well, Mary, I'm sure about that. And then the snow that was forecast that we couldn't come to church and we might slip and fall on the sidewalk. Ah! Billy knew that Mike and the girls would get it all cleaned off. <laughs> <laughs> what a deal. And then Billy, Billy didn't get to go to the game at Cimarron, but he was kind of worried about that game because they're ranked in 3A. And you know what Billy heard? He heard that Tara and Teresa and all of their buddies, their girlfriends, their coaches, had a wonderful night. And they kept up with those girls and they did beautifully. And then Ashlyn hurt her ankle. And then those girls who were supposed to beat us by a whole bunch did it by just a few points. And we were so proud of our girls. Billy was ecstatic when I got home and told me what happened. And then another thing is that we Billy's been worried about Gordon. But we had a phone call this morning, and Billy listened in, and he heard that Gordon took 30 steps yesterday with his walker, the most that he has done in years. In fact, about two years, I think. So it's really about that. And then about Darby. Darby had surgery this morning, I think about 7.30. And when we heard from her granddaddy, it sounded like everything was going very, very well. So we're so thankful. Billy was just almost jumping up and down. He was so excited. And now that the coach came in, I'll have to tell you a little bit more. We, Billy was so sad because he knew what the record of those Cimarron girls was. I was really nervous. And then our girls were wonderful. And so when I got home and told him that, the coach was happy, the coaches were happy, the girls were happy because of what they had done. And they never give up. That's what's wonderful. Well, then another downer that Billy had that now he doesn't have anymore, well, maybe he does, is that Gordon wasn't going to be here, but he could walk with the, with the 30 steps with the walker. But Juan wasn't going to be here, so that meant Cinnamon rolls <laughs> But Billy doesn't care because Billy couldn't eat him anyway. <laughs> no, I'm sad. <laughs> so Billy's pretty happy about that. Even though he does feel sorry for the rest of you. But maybe that's something else. Maybe maybe somebody bought brown ice cream. <laughs> There's something that will make us all feel better. Because we know that the rule that men set down 
that sometimes we think we have to abide by. We know they aren't God's rule, don't we, Irma? They aren't what God wants or what we want. And so Billy can say, thank you, God, for taking care of everybody. Thank you, God, for taking care of Dorothy and Irving and finding the best thing that could ever happen to them now. And that we can be happy for them and we don't have to be sad. And so out of the mouths of babes sometimes comes something wonderful that we know is true, that God loves those who love him and who show that they love him to others. And so aren't we thankful for what God does and for what he's doing for all of us? Because we can say prayers, all of us, all of us can say prayers for good things because we know that good comes from God, not ever evil. Billy is so wise, isn't he? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Billy. <laughs>
Do you have empathy with our disappointments in ourselves and with others? Help us to be disciples who know that your way is not a shortcut to fame or popularity or prosperity. Yours is the way of the cross, and you are the one who calls people to follow paths otherwise unchosen. May we be your ambassadors as the church goes to troubled places and ministers among those in need and strives to bring the compassion and justice to your realm and to the world you so love in and through Jesus Christ. Surprise us with your grace. Keep us faithful. Remind us always that nothing we do in your name is ever in vain. You challenge us and direct us in the way of the cross. You teach us paradoxes of faith. In losing our lives, we find them. In giving, we receive. In forgiving, we are forgiven. In loving, we are loved. Help us to learn to travel the path you have shown in Jesus Christ. Keep us faithful. Help us to persevere. Eternal God, we come this morning and we just thank you so much for being so faithful, so kind, so gracious. We thank you, Jesus, for coming and going on that cross had a choice. You didn't have to, but you did just for us. We give you the thanks and the praise and the glory. Eternal God, we ask a special blessing this morning on each and every member who is here today, each and every member of our churches and churches throughout the world. Thank you for being faithful to each and every one of us. Bless us, prosper us, send us out into the world to do you. These are not blessings we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us now turn to him number 117. Oh God, our number 415. 415.
Genesis, the very first book of Genesis, be chapter 17, verses 1 through 7 and 15 and 16. Genesis 17. And it's found on page 13 of the Pew Bible. Listen to the word of God. When Abraham was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abraham and said to him, I am God Almighty. Walk with me and be blameless, and I will make my covenant between me and you, and you will, multi and will multiply you exceedingly. Then Abraham fell on his face, and God said to him, Behold, my covenant is with you, and you shall be the father of a multitude of nations. No longer shall your name be Abraham, but your name shall be Abraham. For I have made you the father of a multitude of nations. I will make you exceedingly fruitful, and I will make nations of you, and kings shall come forth from you. And I will establish my covenant between me and you and your descendants after you throughout their generations for an everlasting covenant. To be God to you and to your descendants after you. And we go to 15 and 16. This is the promise to Sarai. And God said to Abraham, As for Sarai your wife, you shall not call her name Sarai, but Sarah shall be her name. I will bless her, and moreover I will give you a son by her. I will bless her, and she shall be a mother of nations. Kings of people shall come from her. So please turn with me in the New Testament. The Gospel of Mark, chapter 8, 31 through 38. And that is found on page 44 of the Pew Bibles, right at the back. Page 44 in the New Testament. Mark 8, 31. And Jesus began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders and the chief priests and the scribes and be killed and after three days rise again. And he said this plainly. And Peter took him and began to rebuke him. But turning and seeing his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are not on the side of God, but of men. And he called to him the multitude with his disciples and said to them, If anyone would come after me, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For whoever would save their life will lose it, and whoever loses their life for my sake and the gospels will save it. For what does it profit a person to gain the whole world and forfeit his life? What can a person give in return for their lives? For whoever is ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them will the Son of Man also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. And he said this to them, Truly I say to you, there is some standing here who will not taste death before they see that the kingdom of God has come with power. This is the word of God. Thanks, Thanks to, God. to God. Uh, from those two passages, mostly from the Mark passage, I want to direct your attention to being a Christian is serious business. Being a Christian is serious business. Now whenever I think of the word business, I think of greenbacks, dollars being exchanged for services. But every so often we are reminded that uh, business, my business, your business, our business, God's business, is not commercial. It's faithfulness. It's between God and us. And it's all the heart. Well, in his covenant prayer on the first day of the year, uh, on the other side of the 
on we say on old year's day or old year's night uh, here we say new year's night or new year's eve but john wesley on new year's eve always made a covenant with god always said a prayer and it went just like this this is John Wesley prayer. I am no longer my own, but thine. Put me to what thou wilt, what you want me to do. Rate me, or set me, with whom thou wilt. Put me to doing, put me to suffering. Let me be employed for thee, or laid aside for thee. Exalted for thee, or brought low for thee. Let me be full, let me be empty. Let me have all things, let me have nothing. I freely and heartily yield all things to thy pleasure and disposal. So John Wesley every year committed his life for this coming year to the Lord, to Jesus Christ. And this session of Lent reminds us, as disciples of Jesus Christ, to pray as Wesley prayed. It reminds us to, to follow the dictates of a God, a loving God, and not the dictates of our own sinful selves. To follow, to surrender our wills and our lives to the perfect will of God. It's only the second Sunday in Lent, and already we're beginning to look at the resurrection. Already we're beginning to think of that. Now it's easy for us because we're looking back at the cross some 2,000 years after. But imagine the plight of Peter and those guys, uh, the Son of Man, this person you think is going to ride into town and run the Romans out and conquer the world. The Son of Man is going to be crucified. Die. He raised after three days. To me, it would not have made any sense. And it didn't to Peter and the guys who were there. But God's promise to two geriatric patients, Abraham, 99, and his wife, Sarah, in their 90s, promised that you will be parents of a son. That alone gives us hope. That alone gives, gave them hope. That alone gives hope for the world. What did they do? They just laughed. I guess. Why not? Here we are in our 90s and we're going to be parents. Well, I think I would have laughed as well. But God's promise to the disciples that after a few days, after a series of bad things happening, a whole lot of bad events will take place. It'll take three days after the worst of the events, after the crucifixion, the Son of Man will rise again. And that gives us hope. And let me put ourselves on a lonely path with Jesus Christ for 40 days and 40 nights. Out there in the wilderness, struggling with hunger, struggling with thirst, struggling with loneliness, struggling with doubt, struggling with fear. All of these bad things happening, but it set him up for his power. And let's we put ourselves on a 40-year journey with the people of Israel, wondering, oh, when on earth is God going to give us this land that God promised? A land flowing with milk and honey. And here it is. For 40 years, we are just wandering through the wilderness and the jungles. Well, in Lent, we do business with repentance. And repentance is turning around. We're going in one direction. We take a higher degree, turn on the other. 
Biblical elect means dying to self. Means we are drowned in baptism and we are raised to new life. It means crucifixion, death, and then the resurrection. It means Good Friday, a terrible day for Jesus Christ. And then it means Easter, resurrection, Sunday. The cross that Jesus carried was not a light one. He carried the sin the whole world. As Christians, our crosses are not light. The resurrection is not found in Lent. In Lent ends when uh, we put the body of a slain Savior in the grave. But then, we look forward to the resurrection. We know the resurrection is coming. And we are assured of this because we can look back on it. But those guys who were looking forward just could not understand. So each year in Lent, during Lent, we ask, why did Jesus have to die? Did Jesus really have to die? Why did he have to die? Well, I want to give you a very short, very brief answer. He died to fulfill Scripture. He died because the prophets prophesied that he would. He died to fulfill the prophecy of God in the scripture. Now let's look at Isaiah, some 500 years before this event, this crucifixion. 500 years. I mean, America hasn't been around for 500 years. 500 years before, Isaiah in 53, 5 and 6 said, but he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our guilt and iniquity. The chastisement needful to obtain peace. And well being for us was upon him and with the stripes that wounded him. The stripes that uh, made him whole. All we like sheep have gone astray and turned our own ways. And the chastisement and the guilt and the iniquity of us all he died for us. In Mark, some 500 years later, Mark 8.31, Jesus said, and you just heard me read that, the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected. He must be killed and after three days rise again. Jesus knew that many of his followers would be crucified. His head man, Peter, was crucified and uh, we're told upside down because he, he thought he wasn't worthy to be crucified like his Lord and Savior. Jesus knew that many of his followers would be martyrs. He could not ask his followers to do anything he was not willing to do by himself, for himself. Jesus went on in Mark 8, 34, If anyone intends to come after me, let them deny themselves, forget, ignore, disown, and lose sight of themselves, and their own interest. Let them take up their cross and follow me. And joining me as a disciple and siding with my heart. Follow me continually, cleaving steadfastly to me. For whoever wants to save their life, because their higher spiritual life, their eternal life, will lose it, the lower natural, temporal life, which is lived on earth for my sake and for the gospel, will save their life in the eternal kingdom of God. Stop for a moment. Think just a few weeks ago of those 21 cops. Imagine the execution is coming at each 
and every one of them. The Copts are people from the Coptic Church, it's one of the original churches in Egypt. Uh, they're Egyptians, they're the true Egyptians, not the ones who've conquered them and are now in charge of Egypt. But they still carry on with their Christian work. They're still the Coptic Christian Church. Imagine the executioner coming to each one of them, of those 21 men, and saying, well, will you reject Jesus Christ? Or will you accept their demonic demons? And each one said no, and they lost their heads. The first one, the second one, down to the 21st one, refused to give up Jesus Christ and rather accepted death than bow to their enemies, false demonic people. They could have kept their heads, they could have been alive today, but all 21 of those men are now with Jesus Christ. They preferred to lose their earthly life for the reward of the kingdom of God. I'm sure one or two of them thought, well, how would my wife and family carry on without me? But they gave up their lives, their earthly, temporal lives, to be with Jesus Christ. Being a Christian is like carrying an execution chair, the electric chair on your shoulder. You stay there and you stand behind the cross. And we, be, we declare that we belong to Jesus Christ no matter what. My friends, even here in America, we're getting to the stage <coughs> where we're going to have to make choices. We're going to have to decide whether we belong to Jesus Christ or we want to go and bow to the secular society. I want to bring up a, a lady by the name of Stutzman, and you're familiar. She's grandmother Stutzman, by the way. You're, fam you're familiar with one of the Stutzmans. And this Stutzman is out west, and she uh, owns a flower shop. And so people came in with a proposal that was not Christian. Two men were going to marry, or two men were going to get together. I, I don't associate that with marriage or any Christian, uh, any Christian claim. <coughs> and they took her to court because she wouldn't serve them. Now she knew one of the guys, she held him by the hand, she spoke to him, Grandmother Stutzman said, no, well, you know, I don't approve of what you're doing and I can serve you in other ways, but not for your wedding. So the state went ahead, fined her $2,000, and then they said, well, we'll give you a chance. We, you pay a dollar and uh, go and serve the entire community, whatever they want. She said, no, I will not. And now she is uh, held in contempt, and uh, Grandmother Stutzman is going to be, uh, well, uh, hopefully she'll be before the Supreme Court shortly. But here in America, we, like Grandmother Stutzman, the florist out north, we're going to have to make choices. And it's coming. And as Christians, we want to cry when our fellow Christians cry. We want to laugh when our fellow Christians laugh, just as Jesus says. He came to show us the way. And he reminds us and assures us we have nothing to fear one of our presidents said, but fear itself. For we have Jesus Christ with us. Being a Christian is serious business, following a dedicated, loving, caring Savior. My friends, being a Christian is serious business. Amen. Uh, let us repeat our offering prayer together. <coughs> You have been faithful to your people, O oh God, from generation to generation. Through the years, you continually shower us with your love and blessings. 
Our dear abundance, we now share these blessings with those in need. We dare not to prove our faith, but because our faith empowers us to live fully and generously. Amen. We now with the offering.
By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory, and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with all the Holy Spirit, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, with the confidence of children of God, let us pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, and deliver us from evil. For God is the kingdom, and our power, and the glory of God. According to Luke, on the night in which our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ was betrayed, he took bread and he blessed it and risked his Father and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When we eat the bread, we do not share the broken body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, he raised it to his Father and he blessed it, and he says, Drink you all of this, for this is my blood of the new covenant, shed for the remission of sins. Do this as often as you do it in remembrance of it. When we drink the wine, we may not share the shed blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. People of God, the gifts of God for the people of God. Take eat, feed on him by faith in your hearts with thanksgiving. Let us continue together. of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ broke before you. Let us come in together. Blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ shed for you. Let us be together. Let us pray, eternal God. We just give you thanks and praise. We thank you, Father, for the sending of Jesus Christ to die on the cross for us. We ask you, Lord, to use us in your service. Help us to go out there and be able to be a light to the light of Jesus Christ. Be with us now and forever. In Jesus' name.
have made a hymn 710, Faith of Our Parents. Faith of Our Parents. 710. <laughs>